Before I start, I want to give a shout out to several people that are that do a great job behind the scenes for the Browns, for our organizations. Uh, Chavis Cook and our football ops department do an unbelievable job uh, during training camp, you know, during the season at home, on the road. So many uh, sacrifices those guys make in that department, and Chavis does a wonderful job for us. Uh, John Frain and his security department, I want to give them a shout out to. Um, incredible, uh, selfless uh, people that they'll do anything to help our organization to make our lives a little bit easier. And of course, Brad Mellon and his equipment staff. Uh, I don't know if, you know, practices, you guys don't notice sometimes, but it's extremely important to have people that are competent and know what they're doing during practice. And we really have those guys here. And, and Brad does a great job leading that equipment staff. So I appreciate them. And I wanted to make sure I mentioned them before we started the season. Um, on to the Carolina Panthers. The uh, Panthers invested a little bit of money in, in, in their personnel this offseason. Um, they brought in Andre Roberts, who, although he's 34 years old, is still an outstanding returner. Um, you know, he's got six career touchdowns, three on punt, three on kickoff. And he had a touchdown last year when he was with the Chargers. We played him early when he was with Houston. Um, you know, obviously a big time threat, even though he's a little bit older. He does, he acts much younger than he, than he is. Um, you know, I, I look a lot older than I am, but I'm, I'm much more immature than my actual age. So that's kind of how I relate that one. Um, secondly, they brought in a punter, you know, Johnny Hecker. Longtime L.A. Ram, who's had a great career, and uh, he'll make their punt game much, much better. And they got, they've got a lot of really good core players. They've got a, uh, first of all, they got Jansen, the center, 15-year uh, veteran long snapper who's still playing at a high level. And they have a lot of good core players. They got 42, 23. Uh, they got 49, who's now playing on defense, Luvu, 45, good core team player. Their, their best player, in my opinion, number 50, Stanford, he's hurt. Uh, watching him in the offseason, it was a, a nightmare. So they have a lot of good players. They're well coached by Chris Tabor. You guys know Chris, and they're sound, and they'll play hard for him, and he always does a good job with his team. So obviously our work cut out for us like we do every week, but in particular because of some of the unknowns, you don't know exactly where everybody's going to be. That's kind of my challenge, trying to guess uh, what Chris has done in Chicago and other places he's been in terms of personnel and how that personnel matches up to what Carolina has on their, on their roster. So it would be a good game. It would be fun on Sunday. And coach, you know, um, that's a great question because it's, you know, when Jakeem got hurt and it's been several weeks and obviously that that stung us a little bit. Uh, we were going to rely on him a lot on kickoff and punt and, you know, injuries are part of football. Unfortunately, unfortunately, they're an unfortunate part of football. Um, and in his case, I think he would have transcended our return game. I really do. Uh, but I think we'll be OK. I think, you know, um, we're going to use Demetric Felton and he has uh, got some experience under his belt. And he's a year older, a year more mature. He's seen a lot of football uh, uh, since last year. So I think he will uh, be a good option for us there. Kicks and punts. Mm -hmm. He'll be kicks and punts. Um, Dearness Johnson will be a backup there. Donovan Peoples-Jones will be a backup on punt return. Where is the, the biggest jump there? I know it was a little bit new to him last year. I know the mm -hmm. speed is different, all of that. What, sure. where, is, where is he kind of um, He had never that? returned a punt until a year ago in an actual game. And he has worked extremely hard in his ball security, tracking punts, catching punts, just the little nuances of where your hands are, your elbows, your feet, your body position, how to you know track it, get to the spot, then let your feet, you know, move your feet to adjust and those little things. He's hundreds and hundreds of reps since last year in terms of the spring and training camp and then this past week. So um, he's, I don't want to say comfortable because I never want my return to be comfortable, but I want him to be confident. I think he's much more confident than he was a year ago. How about the rest of that unit? The, uh, the blocking unit, are there a lot of changes or is it uh, the same unit basically as last year? Well, you're always going to have changes. I think at the bottom part of the roster, you have changes every uh, every year. Um, some of the guys that are coming back that are really had a good camp, um, Taki Taki, you know, Sione had a great camp, really looking forward to his progress. Um, you know, Jacob Phillips will use him on some phases. You know, Ronnie Harrison's come back and has done a really nice job for us. I'm excited about his progress. And we got some young guys, some rookies, you know, M. Jamerson and, and uh, you know, uh, Alex Wright and, and some of the other young rookies that are, that are going to help us in several phases. So I'm excited about our roster. I'm excited about where we're at, and I can't wait to get going. Mike, if the weather's good um, on a Sunday morning, what do you expect that number would be to Kate and say, I can make it? Well, do you want me to wait till kickoff to tell you? Or do you want me to just decide 8 o'clock Sunday morning? No, I'm kidding. Um, you know, I think it just depends if, you know, the other night, I think we tried against Chicago at 58, which he, you know, he didn't hit it great. 57, he put halfway up the net. You know, the sky's the limit. I think 
It'll be, again, it's like a normal game situation. You know, how much time is left in the half is the last kick of the half. You know, then the long kick, we're going to have to cover it. You know, those are things that, that you uh, keep in mind. And I think it's just a situation by situation kick. And But I do know this, we have a lot of confidence in his leg strength. That punting position battle, I guess, what you saw from him in the preseason. And I know last time we talked to you or a few times ago, you talked about him and Joe working on directionality and things like that, how he improved there. I've never used the word directionality in my life. That was awesome. Um, yes, he's a more better directional punter. That's what we're looking for. Um, no, I think, you know, he is uh, he has become more consistent. He's shortened down his jab step, which is going to help him with his directional kicks. Um, you know, I'm excited about his future because he's got a big time leg, and that's exactly what we need in our stadium. Um, and I think you guys know that. But if we can become a more consistent directional team, that's really going to help us. Forward to special teams being an asset and a, and a reason that you guys win games this year. Uh, Jakeem aside, obviously, but right. uh, as opposed to you know some of the things that happened last year. Sure, um, you know, anytime you go out there, we expect to be a weapon. We expect our punt team to be a weapon. Our kickoff team was absolutely a weapon last year, and we hope to continue that trend. Uh, in the return game, the the thing that we did for our offense and we've done since I've been here is given the ball back to the offense, and that's that's the first and foremost. If we average seven yards and 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 don't turn the ball over and, and give us good field position, our returners make good decisions, and that's a plus. Uh, Jakeem would have made us better in that regard, but I think I still think we're going to have an opportunity. You know, we're um, you know we're a team that's going to expect to do well on special teams week in and week out. Um, I think we got good players. I think they're well coached. And I think they're going to play hard for us. And I think the sky's the limit for our guys. Was there a question about holding? Was he there? Did you guys you know, get him to a level you put him I think last year, early in the season in Green Bay, there was a question. I think he worked extremely hard on, on rectifying that. And he's worked really hard since he's been here. And uh, Cade, if you ask Cade, he would say he has a ton of confidence in him. Because I think, I think Corey's a really good athlete. And I think he just needed to buckle down and, and understand the nuances of it. And, and I think he's going to do a great job for us. I know he will. I know you have all the confidence. He's a confident kid. But as a rookie, is there still an amount of unknown just because he's a rookie, never kicked in a regular season game. Before. Yeah, I think there is. I think there is a, 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 a rookie at any position. To be honest with you, you just don't know. Um, I was talking to the team the other day, and you know, I talked to him during um, training camp, right before our first preseason game. I'm like, I know a lot of you young players have played in big time games in college, um, but there's never going to be a faster game that you've ever played in until the first preseason game. Well, I kind of stepped it up a notch and I said, look, we're about to go to the regular season. So, the, you know, it's never going to be a, any faster than you. You've never seen a faster game than your first regular season game. And it's like that in the playoffs and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, we, you know, with a kicker, I think it can be a little bit different. I think, like you said, he's very confident. He's very good and he knows it and he knows he's got to, you know, keep working on the little things to become more consistent. And, and when he gets to that point, he's got to be like the other great kickers in this league. I mean, to me right now, he's the fourth best kicker in our division. I mean, when you look at it, because he hasn't proven anything yet, and we got three great kickers in our division. I mean, think about that. Think about our division for a second with, you know, with those three guys. So uh, Cade knows he's got, you know, to compete with those guys, you know, from afar and the rest of are playing him on Sunday every single week. And I think he's up to that challenge. I guess without getting too detailed, what has he had to refine? So he he works uh, a lot on his uh, body position, and he works a lot with his plant foot, and making sure it's not too far, too far back. Whether or not that uh, plant leg is there's a little bit of knee bend in there or not. Um, so those are the things he'll, he'll take a look at. We'll really focus on maybe one thing every time we practice because you don't want a young guy or any kicker for that matter or punter thinking about too many things at once. So it's just the, the little technique issues that, uh, that he's got to continue to work on to be more consistent. But it, it's all there. He just got to, you know, like anything else, it's like, you know, I'm not a golfer. You guys saw me swing. You'd understand why. Um, but I think when you take a golfer or any specialist, there's always something you're going to have to work on. And, you know, he didn't kick for 10 days. And yesterday he came out, and he was 16 of 18 on the side. And he was mad that he didn't do, you know, make all 18. And I said, look, you haven't kicked in 10 days. And he went out and did a great job for us. So uh, we're resting up that leg. And now he's refreshed and he's ready to roll. Did you, did you go down to LSU to, to work him out personally? I did. Before the, I did. Then how did he compare to, uh, in the past, some of the other kickers that you've worked out? One thing that jumped out at me was his confidence. He's, he has a lot of confidence. And, and I don't, he came across, I think some coaches thought he was a little bit cocky at the combine. I never saw that. I just saw a young, 
a young man. He's young now. He just turned 21 a few months ago. So he's a young guy that's extremely confident in his abilities, uh, knows he's got work to do, and he's humble enough to know that he's, you know, he's got to go out and prove it week in and week out. Um, that's one thing that jumped out to me, that he was a very confident young man, which I like. Sorry. Was his leg tired? Is that why he got 10 days off? Yeah, I think so, a little bit. Um, you know, kicking off, he had never kicked off before. I mean, he has the ability to, obviously. You guys saw that. I think the kickoffs and the, and the field goals, and we just felt like it was a smart thing to do. And then we ramped him up this week, and he'll kick some more tomorrow and be ready for Sunday. Uh, that'd be great. We'll double him. You know, I know he's a great athlete, so we'll have to double him. <laughs> Practice with Cade? Yeah, and, and Corey, to be honest, this is a really good question because, you know, we'll get the crosswind out here. So when O and D is on the other field, we'll use the, the you know, field two, for example, if they're on field one, and we'll kick one way because we have a left to right crosswind and flip it, and we'll have right to left crosswind and, or headwind, tailwind, and stuff like that. So we try to use that, and it's really his idea. He likes to do that, and he loves, like yesterday, we're kicking field goals into the wind. He loved it. Um, you know, he kicked a 50, I want to say a 58 yarder into the wind yesterday and smoked it. So that gives him a lot of confidence to go into Cleveland. And, and of course, we all know Cleveland is God's country. I say that all the time and I firmly believe that. But we do have some bad weather sometimes, as, as you alluded to. <laughs> 